please welcome Richard O'Brien. <laughs> Nice. I didn't expect those guys out there. No. <laughs> Real musicians. I, I, I won't put a hand near any of this. Careful. In case. Don't encourage them, please. They'll only be back next week. Hello. Now, who is Mumsy? Mumsy mm. is actually uh, she, Sandra Curran, the yeah, actress Sandra Curran. And uh, she's uh, the sister of uh, that f lovely singer Alma Cogan. A uh, little known fact oh, really? uh, for trivia quiz fans. Wow! And uh, she started. She came along in the first show to, uh, to do a couple of games, uh, be the, the fortune teller. Mm. And as one of the contestants was going in, I said, uh, "Don't be too hard on her. You know, it's, it's my mum, and she likes a bit of this, <laughs> and uh, she's not feeling. You know, she's got a bit of a headache this morning. And, uh, and from that, that sort of grew. Yeah. That kind of idea. That's where we lived, and all that kind of." Another layer. Another layer to it. Mm. It's funny, when you watch something at home, a quiz or a game like this, it's like, go on, don't, oh, don't, oh, you're so Frustration stupid. Frustration value is good, isn't it? Oh, uh, don't you get that being there? I did, actually, and I, but uh, I didn't realise I was so rude to people. I, I really <laughs> thought I was being extremely nice to people. And then I watched the first series and discovered that I was being very acerbic to these people. And it, it was completely natural. I just felt that if I treat them, if I try and tr treat people and patronise them and say it's all right, don't worry, don't get nervous mm. and all that kind of stuff, I was, we were going down a, a road that everyone has gone down before. But if I was to say to, to treat the, the contestants in the same way, say that if you came round to my place and I was teaching you a card game and we had a couple of dummy runs mm. and uh, I said let's go for it now we'll play a proper game and you started to screw up. I said, oh, for God's sakes, come on, we've done two dummy runs, you know, yeah. get your brain in it. We do it, don't we? Yeah. And nobody takes offence at this kind of interaction uh, no. between people. I don't think so, no. No, I think it sure. works extremely well. <laughs> extremely well. A very brave decision um, when a show is extremely popular, like The Crystal Maze is, to, to leave it. Why? I, th I, think if, I think if that's your raison d'etre, if that's what drives you through life, then I think it probably would have been a brave thing. But it's not something I ever conceived that I would be doing, imagined that I'd be doing anywhere in the first place. And I, th I thought I was running the risk of becoming a parody of myself if I stayed there much longer. Uh, I seem to be saying this, there's a lot of information that has to be said, has mm. to be given. Um, you've played two zones, you've won three crystals, that's 15 seconds. And I have to keep reiterating that all the way through the show. And I just found I was saying the same thing, different faces to different people, but I was saying the same things. I was boring myself and I thought, oh, obviously boring the viewers as well. <laughs> <laughs> Do people, you know, come up to you in the street and say, oh, Chris, Chris away, yeah. Chris away. I said, no, I'm a human being, I'm not amazed. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, but people think I'm right, said Fred now, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> and, uh, and one woman, she came up to, she went, oh, it is, isn't it? It's, it's Richard, Richard, I mean, Richard Digence. <laughs> and I went, no, she went, no, you're not, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, in moments of, of sort of boredom on the show, you used to whip out your harmonica, which I'm pleased to see. I've got a little harmonica. I, I play yeah. very badly. See, I, when I got this, it was, I bought it really for, to, to do the maze. I thought, I've, I'll entertain myself and do a bit mm. of, you know, surprise music and add a little something to the, to the piece, get me a, something to do. And I thought, oh, if I learn the blues, blues is only three chords. So mm. it's, it's E, generally A and B. And uh, I thought, I've got to learn three notes and I can play a blues harp, can't I? Mm. Doesn't work that way. Doesn't it? No. Yeah. Yeah. But it's all on the suck. You see, if you play the harmonica, it's all on the blow, which you get home on the range and all that stuff. So I go. <laughs> Keep, uh, you know, well, first pardon. world war stuff, yeah. you know. <laughs> God bless you, Governor. And, uh, and uh, it's better, uh, blues, blues is all on the suck, you see. I go. You run out of breath. <laughs> if anybody wants this, uh, you can apply for it later on. Oh, yes, why don't we send it away? Well, your little boy wants to, wants to write it. But some. I think the guitar is much more raunchy for you. The guitar is interesting. I learned to play the guitar very badly, and I still play it very badly. I learned off Maoris. So Maoris are the mo one of the Polynesian's most natural musicians in the world. They immediately go into third and fifth harmonies if there's three of them. Well, somebody takes the melody line. But they, we never used to have a... We used to have the sixth string, Maoris. never used to have the, the big fat string on here because uh, it was easier to play without it. Mm. And so I learnt, I learnt very badly. Oh, we're getting a bit of buzz off there. Why are we getting that off there? Oh, I don't we know. We never had it before. Don't ask me. I'll oh, turn it right up. 
Who did that? So I hold a chord. You're supposed to bar, you see, and keep your thumb behind there. But I bring my thumb over there, you see, and it's a very lazy. But a very quick, a very quick rock and roll. Do you, do you like rock and roll guitar? Well, this quick. is very quick. You, you just put a bar there. You just put your finger there, and you've got an A. You bring it across to there and put your finger in there, and you've got a D, and you just put your finger on that string there, and you've got the E, and you can play rock and roll then. Oh, it's astounding, mm, time is fleeting Madness takes its toll You see how easy that is? It's a bit of the Rocky Horror Show, then. listen. 21 years old, the Rocky Horror Show this year. And, and you're, you sort of do a little show before it now, you're trying out. Well, Mephist I've been, writing, yeah, I've been writing, writing some stuff for The Demon Mephistopheles has come out. It looks exactly like me, I have to say. It's yeah. a surprise, surprise. Uh, except he's got little horns and a, and a rather, rather wicked tail and little hooves. And I've been writing some rock and roll songs for him and, and uh, the occasional Jake. And uh, he's been out and done 47 minutes. And uh, that's what I shall be doing. I shall be going around the country with this demon who uh, takes over my body. And mm. what do you call it? Do you call it a possession? Yeah. I've been possessed by a demon I... who's, who's, who's uh, really uh, his raison d'etre is, is joy. Because that's what drives him, and he wants to get everybody to be a bit more joyous. And, Quite uh, right, too. A little more rock and roll in our lives. Rock and roll is a very good philosophy for life, because when you get nervous and you get upset, and you, and you, or, or, you, or you've got, you, you're on, mm. if you say to yourself, you know, if it's an interview, a job interview or something like that, you say, it's rock and roll, it's only rock and roll. And suddenly everything just falls I away. I shall remember that. It's very good. Thank you so much. Richard O'Brien, it's only rock and roll.